Hi, my name is Alyssa and in today's video, I will be showing you how to complete module three of the Interior Design Institute's certificate course on design styles. We will be showing you how to use three different tools to create a mood board. This is the easiest module that you will need to submit. Let's go and have some fun and enjoy our very easy module to complete. Today I will show you three ways to create a mood board. They are all free. The first way will be using Canva, which we used in the first module. However, I will show you to get a mood board template without even trying. And then the next way I will show you is using Millanote. Millanote also have mood board templates. And then the last way is going to be using Style Sourcebook, which is the easiest and most fun way to create a mood board. I wish I used it for my module three. So let's start with showing you my example of my mood board, and then I'll show you Canva, and then Millanote, and then Style Sourcebook. Let's go. This is my module three assignment that I handed in. I don't see this as being excellent. It got full marks, um, but when I see other people's mood boards, they're pretty excellent. I feel like this sort of sets, you know, the basis of what a mood board is. So a mood board is strictly creative. All the stuff you put in there isn't necessarily the stuff you're going to use in the end design. It's just to give your client the idea of the mood. So you can see here, you know, um, I've got images. So one of the key things you need to add are these images that sets like the feel and the mood of what you're looking for. Obviously, mine's an industrial feel. And then like these are the ideas. So it's like, oh, yeah, I kind of want something, a light that looks this, like, in a dark black finish that looks industrial like this and I also want to take the inspiration from this image here to have um, a mixed metal with like the fixtures yeah and then I've got the concrete here so you know I'm getting inspired from that there with the mix of wood like I love this warmth against these cool tones I reckon it looks really really nice and then I've put this here to be like oh you know um, we'll take the colours from here to give it that warmth, but it's industrial and you can see that, you know, there's concrete there. I really like it. So that's what a mood board is. You don't have to go out and source, you know, the actual items you're going to be using. You want to give it the mood and feel. So I've got, okay, I've got the stone finishes here, which is the concrete. We've got the wood. So we could be using this, you know, either on the cabinetry, in time it could be the flooring, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But you sort of get the idea here that I want to put concrete walls or tiles with uh, wooden finishes together with mixed metals. Here at the top I've got the colour scheme that I want to use. So we've got like this um, grey-green uh, which is the darker tone and then this gray and then this pulls in like the warmer tones which is the um, brown which is similar it, which is like coming from these wood tones and then like this lighter neutral tone which is probably where you put everywhere else um, so this would be my accent color this is sort of highlighting the concrete so cool and warmth this is how I like to balance my colors then you need to also include a small summary so this is what I've included down here and that's pretty much it so Another thing to consider in terms of mood boards, usually you would place the items where you would usually see them in real life. Like you would put the flooring closer to the bottom of the page. Then with the fixtures, you put them like clandered closer to the middle of the page because, you know, that's where you're going to be using them. And with lighting, you would put them higher up on the page. But remember, it being a mood board, it's just to, meant to admit the feel. Later on, I think it's in like module seven or nine or whatever, you do actually have to put like a, um, a, I think it's a style board together where you actually put in the items you will be using or you're proposing to the client um, and 
that's when you be a bit more stricter with where you allocate on the page so then the client can visualize what it would look like in their house. So you can kind of keep those principles of where you place your items, like things that are close, going to be closer to the ceiling, you put higher on the page and things closer to the floor, you put lower to the page. So it's all, again, easier for your client to understand. Um, but you have creative license here and this is what makes it the most easiest assignment you need to hand in and probably the most easiest part of presenting to a client. We are now going to be using Canva to create the mood board. So you're going to log into your Canva. I have a link in my description box so that you can create your login if you haven't done that from module one yet. And it's all free. So we're going to go search your content or canvas. I've already searched for mood board, but you essentially just type mood board into here. And then it comes up with mood board templates. And you can see there are all these mood boards that you can use. So um, remember, we want to avoid the ones that have the dollar sign because you don't want to pay for anything. And you also want to avoid anything that's got the crown because that means that you need to have the pro version of camera, which means you have to pay for it. I really like this one because you know how in our assignment we need to write a little written summary. So this allows you to do that, but we don't want to use that one because we have to pay for stuff. This one's really good because I like how it's got, you know, you put in your color scheme. It allows you places to put images for those moods and it also allows you to put in individual items as well. It's pretty easy. Uh, this is a good one. Um, for interior design actually so you can see that this is for a bedroom and uh, they've got that image to set the mood and they've got the different finishes and the color scheme and uh, a little bit of a description as well so we can pick any of these that you like I know that a lot of these are very attractive to um, you because you know this is really creative the most creative part of um, interior design. I personally dislike making mood boards. <laughs> so um, I find this really helpful. So I suggest in looking for a template that you try and find one that is horizontal or landscape because then it looks like um, something that you would present to a client anyway and it's easy for you to um, PDF that to send off for your assignment or to submit for your assignment. Uh, for the purpose of this, let's use this here. Uh, I really like this. Let's use this. Customize this template. And once we finish this example, I will dump the shared link for this Canva um, template into the description box also. So you can open it up and use it or look at it, whatever. Okay, so these colors I'll probably leave till last because I think there's a trick that we can use for that. Um, let's go source images. So we'll go to uploads. Aha, uh -huh, see I use this here, this. Um, so how you would upload a file, you go to upload files. And prior to actually starting this assignment, I would say that you collect all the images that you want to put onto your mood board. Another thing you can do is to find images within Canva. So what you do, you click on elements and I could be like, okay, I want to create a mood board for a bathroom. So I'm going to type in bathroom. And see now there are photos. So see all. And I can find my inspiration images from here, avoiding anything that I need to pay for, which are obviously the ones that you're going to be drawn to because they're the best looking ones. So I'm going to say that this one is one of my inspiration images. I want dark lower cabinets and light uppers, and then all the accents will be black, will be black. So let's see if there's other inspiration images that we could find from here as well. You can say this is what we could want 
the shower area to look like. So it's sort of similar, we've got the darker tones with the lighter uppers, but we're creating a focus piece around the bath and shower. This is a whole wet room, that's really cool. Oh, I like this. I think I like this more. And then because I like it more, I can pull that image on top. Yeah, so, oh, look, there's a pool on this side. How nice is this? All right. So here we've got the wood finishes and we've got some green, some dark parts. So we can say that's also inspired by the ferns here. And then we can start finding like different finishes that we want to include. There's a marble bathroom. So I could type in black tap. Majority of these are all pro version ones. So I suggest that, you know, for your dedicated image pictures, maybe find them on the internet, it might be a bit easier. So we can see this is a little bit offset, so we can change the crop. So I click on crop and you have the capability to move the image underneath this crop frame. So the crop frame is the one that has these corners on it. You can see this is the image underneath, so I've just moved it into the frame. Done. So that's one of the ideas you could say the client will finish it up with some black finishes um, I would say um, towels put this one here same again crop because I want to use this dark towel as the inspo so now it's just showing this dark towel um these tiles we want green geometric tiles and see how it's got this wood here so this sort of ties into this wood here so we'll go wood um, bench bench top Maybe I put this here. Oops. Um, I'll go undo. Yeah. Put this in the middle and then I'll change the green geometric tiles to closer to the floor so it looks so it's easier to visualize and you can kind of see it ties into this um we can do so we've got that bath what else would you want to do? What? Sink. Personally, I would prefer a round sink if I was doing this design, but we can sort of see this ties into this inspo here. Oh, yeah, similar, similar. Put it here so it's between the bench top and the floor and then what else maybe we want wall tiles just go white i love these zilgy tiles these uneven subway tiles i love them i love how they catch light it's beautiful maybe i'll change this to the white towel yeah. Cool, that looks better. 
Uh, let's find a mirror. Yeah. So we'll find a mirror and then lights. And then for here we want lights, pendant light. So I put in this bathroom light, but because I need to have the pro version to use it, it's put on this Canva watermark which is fine. Uh, for this purpose, we'll just leave it there. But if you find that you really like a light and you've looked for it in the elements menu over here, then I would suggest you go find it on the internet, download it to your folders. So save image as, and then just use it that way. So that's all of that. Now we've got um, our color scheme to select from. So, uh, what you could do, you can cheat by picking the colours from the photos. See, oh, photo colours. And see, you've put all your items in and now you can select your key colour scheme from it. How interesting. So, we... Um, this theme is this dark green here that I like. So we're going to take that from this image. Where is it? This one. So that's this colour, kind of. Yep. And then maybe we'll have an accent, which I like is this. And then for the wood tones, so this one's got a lot of the wood, but we're going for this oaky wood here, which has more pink tones in it. Pink and greens look really nice together, so we'll pick this one. Um, we've got a white, so this is the towel. So we'll go on, yeah, we'll go on the lighter scale here. Maybe I'll move it to here. Of course, we've got black from the lights so maybe I'll move this into here so dark so we're trying to go dark to light essentially um, this one I like this so that's the oaky tone here with the white um, I think we'll pick another green another green accent yes and then yeah, so we've got our cool tones, three cool tones, or four, four, including this one. And then we've got some warm tones to balance it out. And there you go, you've created your mood board. How easy. So, um, so we can change the file name up here to IDI module three example mood board and then um, you download it like this so you go to share and then download and then download that to your hard drive and that will turn up in your downloads folder and then you save it into uh, it's not letting me do it because I got the premium image. Let's fix that just for the purpose of downloading it. So elements, oh, yeah. let's just put this in for this purpose. Okay, go up here, share, download, um, PNG download. So now that's downloading to my hard drive here. So see this folder down here that will go to my downloaded folders. And the final mood board looks like this. So um, this has been saved as an image. So what I would do, I would either open up, like you could put it back into Canva or PowerPoint or 
whatever or word google presentation and you can write a small um, blurb on there i'll show you how to do this at so we now we need to write that blurb so we could do that multiple ways we could add a text box like this and put it on top ideally we would do this before we would download it um, and then you sort of have your whole blurb here without having to write it on top of your image because we've already downloaded our image I'm going to show you how you can create that into like a presentation now. So create blank presentation. Okay. Because we have already downloaded our image, we can go to Uploads here, go Upload Files, um, we've go to Downloads, Mood Board, we can see it's uploading, this little blue line here. And then now we click and drag and drop like we did before. Make it big. So you could write your text here. So you get a text, add text box. Line it up here. Okay, and then you can change as long as this uh, text box is highlighted, you can change the size of the font just by going up to the top here, and you can write more stuff but at least let you know that it fits into this section here. In hindsight, I probably would have added a jungle image, so we can do that now because we've got the space. So it's jungle, photos. Yeah, this is nice because it's got the greens and the browns, or this one is also nice. Where is it? It's got Um, so you should write a longer summary than this. So this is just here for, as the example. And then maybe I could put in a heading if I really wanted to. There we go. You can write all your words here. And then you're done. If you wanted to change your font, you can click on the text box, change the font. It's got recommended fonts, so maybe you could want to take advantage of that because it's smart. Uh, maybe I'll go DM Sans for this. Nice. Um, and then remember, you can change the colors. So text color here, and you can use the photo colors. So maybe I'll go this one because we're going jungle themed. That looks pretty cool actually. Yeah, I like this one. And this text might make that the same. Awesome. You can even change the background. So I've clicked on the page in the back. So you can see the highlighted uh, purple, background color, document colors. Uh, do that can't see my text. Uh, what's this one? Nice, nice, that's a bit gross. No, maybe a brown. No, lovely, I like that. Yeah, because then you got the green and the woods. Done. So this is how you can use Canva to help finish your assignment.
So when you first sign up for Millinote, you have an option to describe yourself and then they set up the Millinote uh, software to suit what you need to do. So click on interior designer and then it will prioritize putting all the things that interior designers need into your Millinote. Then it goes through a tutoring phase so you can go through all of that. So we're going to go to a board and we're going to call it module three. Okay, double click. Okay. All right, so we want an interior design mood board because it knows we're an interior designer. So let's select that. And as you can see, there are other templates there. All right, so use this template. And this is quite beautiful. It's got this amazing um, template made up like this. Okay, so um, now we can add stuff to the board. Where we can go to add image and we can search images. So let's go with this first ID here, which is a baby's room. So we'll go uh, baby room. Beautiful. <clears throat> so let's do, um, let's start with our inspiration. So let's say our inspiration for this is unicorns. You can also upload an image here. So you click on the ellipsis here and you click on color and it picks out colors for you. Just like this just from all the things that you've dumped into here. And it gives you the hex codes. So you literally can take these hex codes to your favorite um, paint store and they can make it for you. I personally like to use tint paint because they actually do personalize paint for me and they send it. So you just pull it until it starts repeating the same colors again. And then it's got these text boxes here so you can just start typing your blog. This baby room. So that's how you can create with Millinote. Once you've done what you want to do, then you can share or export your mood board into a Word document or you can put it into a PDF or an image like we did before. So let's do it into a PDF because that means it's ready to go straight to um, be handed in for your assignment. Okay, that's completed and this is how it looks. So obviously you would have filled this in more with more words. And essentially that's your mood board done. Millinote check. Style Sourcebook is a mood board creator and it lists majority of Australian uh, products. Not in terms of products, but Australian brands, Australian stores and what they carry essentially, which is really awesome if you are in Australia. If you're not, it doesn't matter because there's like, all these products on here which don't have backgrounds and you can just start creating rooms and it's quite fun. This is a really great software to use for your future assignments because in your future assignments you have to create um, the boards, the sample boards where you actually have to put in the actual product that you are suggesting to your client. Um, so this is a really good way to do it. So let's start. So 
Um, let's do something easy. Boho is good because everyone loves boho. All right, so let's first look for an inspiration image of boho. So we want this to look like it's a real office, so let's send it back. Oh, look, look at that. Looks like it's sitting behind the desk. How sweet's that? Okay, so we've created our Boho mood board and now we want to download it. So just a tip before we do go out of this is that if you do want to delete items, you have to do it from this image editing tool on the right. Um, like when you click delete on your keyboard, it, it won't work. So now we would download it, it would, would download as an image and then we can then put it into a blank presentation in Canva to do your write up like we showed you in the first chapter for method one, which was Canva. And here it is. So we can save that. It's already saved to your downloads folder. You can go back into Canva, upload it as an image, and then write, do your write up and hand it in. So today's video has shown you three different ways of being able to create a mood board. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you also enjoyed the process of creating a mood board. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, have any questions and stay tuned for the All Elusive Module 4 coming up next. Subscribe and like to be notified of when every module gets uploaded. You are an interior designer and you've got this. You will finish this within 12 weeks.